Good evening, everyone. Let's turn in our hymnals to number 301. Blessed be the name. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord.
just take a moment. We'll have one another. It's good to see everybody back out tonight. This will be our praise song again tonight. Here we go. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I when brokenness and pain is all I know, no, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the light. I'm not afraid to leave my past. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. This power that can break off every chain. This resurrection power that can save this power in your name, power in your name. My fear doesn't. 
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you. I appreciate organization. You know, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. And uh, we try to do about what's uh, uh, in the bulletin. Uh, Miss Mona does a good job trying to put everything in the bulletin. Matter of fact, so much so that sometimes Brother Jim don't have to uh, uh, read the announcements because they're already printed. And so tonight, I just felt led. I was back there telling them, uh, praying. And uh, uh, tonight, we always have the invitation and the altar call at the end of the service. And uh, I'm not trying to make this a, a weekly thing or anything like that, but I'd like to have the uh, altar call right now before I preach, and I'll tell you why. Uh, there may be a lot of you tonight that come to church uh, burdened, heavy-hearted. Uh, we got a big week here emotionally, physically, spiritually, and so uh, I've asked the uh, crew upstairs to uh, uh, play some music in just a moment. They're going to start that. And if you would like to come and just pray, lay something on the altar. Maybe you've been going through some... I, Ricky, I appreciate the flexibility. Because the Bible says with the Spirit of the Lord is there's freedom. There, there, there's freedom to do that. So, And I know you can pray at your seat. And I want to encourage you to do that, whether you're a regular or, or a guest tonight. But uh, Mark, if y'all go ahead and just start that music, Come to Jesus. If you've got something, maybe there's some families in our communities hurt here this weekend. I told somebody this morning, I don't want another 4th of July weekend like this, do you? I mean, houses burning and wrecks and stuff. And so let's just pray. You come to the altar if you want to. We I pray for you. Wounded sinner. Lost and left to die Oh, raise your head for love is passing by Come to Jesus Come to Jesus Come to Jesus And live Now your burden's lifted and carried far away And precious blood has washed away the stain So sing to Jesus Sing to Jesus Sing to Jesus And live And like a newborn baby don't be afraid to crawl And remember when you walk Sometimes we fall So fall on Jesus Fall on Jesus Fall on Jesus And live Sometimes the way is lonely and still can fill with pain So if your sky is dark and pours the rain Then cry to Jesus Cry to Jesus Cry to Jesus And live When the love spills over And music fills the night And when you can't contain your joy inside Then dance for Jesus Dance for Jesus Dance for Jesus 
want to be open to the Holy Spirit, don't you? And if God tells us to do something, then I certainly want to do it. I want you to take your Bibles tonight and be finding again in the Old Testament, uh, the book of Joel, uh, chapter number 2, Joel chapter number 2. Uh, this is somewhat of a continuation of the message this morning. Uh, this morning we talked about a nation that's wounded but not healed, uh, and we looked at the prophet Jeremiah. Uh, tonight we're going to look at Joel. And I just want to be an encouragement to you tonight and, and, and preach on this subject. It's not too late. It's not too late. Joel chapter number 2, beginning in verse number 12. And if you found your place, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'd like to just read just a couple of verses, uh, and then we'll make reference to some, some more of them uh, throughout the message. Joel chapter number 2, beginning in verse number 12. Uh, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me and with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. That's what we just did. And rend your heart, and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repenteth Him of the evil. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight already for your moving in this service. And God, remind this preacher and everybody that occupies a pew, God, we could have some of the best music, we could have some of the best preaching, uh, but God, unless we are fueled by the Holy Spirit, it's all in vain. And so God, tonight I pray that you'll just minister to us and through us. God, I pray tonight, even on Sunday night, as your word goes out, I'm reminded of the scripture that says your word doesn't go out void, but it always finds lodging somewhere and accomplishes that which you'd have it to. God, I pray for uh, all of us that are here tonight. Every pew represent and every pulpit tonight represents a need. And God, I pray that our needs will be met right now at the feet of the Lord Jesus. For we ask it in His name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As I said, I want to preach tonight just for a little while on this subject. It's not too, too late to bring you up to snuff, if you will, about where we are in the Scripture. In the book of Joel, the nation of Israel during this writing is in trouble. They are under attack, constant attack from their enemies. We were in chapter 2. If you'll go over to chapter 3 and look down in verse number 2, you've, uh, you'll find out that they've experienced a terrible drought. There's a massive invasion of locusts. You find that when you go back to chapter 1 and verse 17, verse 7 through 20. And so these tragedies have hit them. And, and they came unannounced. And how many times in our life does tragedy ride in unannounced? I mean, it doesn't call you and tell you it's coming. It doesn't ask for your permission to come. And so these tragedies have left the land ruined and they've left the people demoralized. They've lost their faith. They've lost their, their hope. But how many of you know when it seems desperate, God always has a remnant. And God always raises up a voice. And so the prophet Joel is catapulted onto the scene. And, and he begins to preach. And he talks about a illustration of the events that are taking place in, in these people's lives. And he said, look, I'm not judging you, but God is. 
said these things are happening because of your living, because of your lack of uh, following uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the Lord God in your life. The specific sin now is not named in this book. But if you'll read the entire book of Joel, you'll find out that what had taken place is the people of God had kind of slipped in to an area of complacency. In other words, they were very apathetic about where God was. And boy, when God's blessing and people are getting saved and the baptistry waters are being, uh, being stirred, boy, it's kind of easy to get complacent. It's kind of easy to say, uh, put it on cruise control and just let God take care of everything. But friend, we get in a very dangerous situation because somebody may be here tonight and say, well, Brother James, we've had a lot of people join here. Yes, we have, and praise God for that. We've had a lot of people get saved here. Yes, we have, and praise God for that. But let me remind me and remind you, we're not done because He's not done. There's still more people that need to be saved. There's still more people that need to be uh, reached. So what happened was God used nature and God used Israel's enemies as a means of His divine judgment. He used these trials as a way to get a nation's attention. And I make the parallel between this nation and like I did this morning, the nation of Judah and, and the United States of America. The book of Joel, anybody will tell you, it is a book of judgment. It talks about the judgment of God. But I want you to know, not only is, there, is it a book of judgment, it's also a book of hope. There's hope in Jesus tonight. If you don't have hope in Jesus, you're of all men most miserable. And so tonight, I want to just to give a word to you tonight and don't want to prop you up by any, any false credentials tonight, but I want to tell you, as long as the Lord is the Lord and He is, as long as <coughs> that person's alive, there's still hope. It may not be a lot of hope. It may be not as much hope as there used to be. But thank God, once that person gets in the grave, uh, they don't have any more hope. And I don't want to be diskind and unkind, rather, to those people that are doctrinally different from, from, we, from we. But nobody's going to stand over you and read a book of prayers and bring you back. You're not going to be prayed out of purgatory and come back and be given another chance. You're not going to be reincarnated and come back and, and listen to that old red-faced preacher again and, and maybe get your heart right. Hey, you only go around one time. And so what Joel was saying is the same thing God's saying to America. You better look at the signs. And I like old Vance Habner, brother, brother Rick. I like uh, Adrian, but I also like Vance Habner. Vance Habner is fantastic for being so dry, but having those one-liners. Vance Habner used to say this before he died. He said, "I'm not listening for, I'm not looking for the signs anymore, the signs of the second coming." He said, "I'm listening for the sounds." Because it's, it's, it's even at the door. And friend, let me tell you something. In conclusion to the message this morning, one of the things that bothers me about the Bible and the end time prophecy, now hear me carefully. One of the things that bothers me about the Bible and the end time prophecy is the fact that America does not appear anywhere in it. You think about it. America does not appear in it. Our nation is number one in military. We're number one in economics. We're number one in finance. We have the greatest supply of natural resources. And despite of all that, everybody would have to agree that our nation is only a mere shadow of what it was a generation ago. And friend, what will happen if we continue to go down like we... What's it going to take? Economic collapse? What's it going to take? Military defeat? What's it going to take? Political demise? The fact is, America, as I said this morning, is already under the judgment of God, but not like we're going to be. I'm not a doomsday prophet. I'm not a negative person. Matter of fact, I would think I lean more sometimes toward the more positive. But, but you've got to just realize where we are in our nation. A nation that was built and founded on the principles of the Word of God. Now we have distanced ourselves from that Word and from that God. And so tonight I want to talk to you though. Even where we are tonight. There's still hope. It's not too late. 
It's not too late for your son that's never been saved. It's not too late. It's not too late for your son that's in the far country. It's not too late. It's not too late for your wife that has never uh, shown any interest in spiritual matters. It's not too late because our God is a God of miracles. And there's no such thing as a hopeless cause, aren't you? Brother Mike, I, I would have to be, I, I want to admit to you, uh, because, and I'm not proud of it, and I'm glad my sons are not here tonight to, to hear this, but I did so many stupid things and things I'm ashamed of. And I heard a man tell my mother, as a matter of fact, a police officer tell my mother, uh, Derek, that I was hopeless. There's no hope for your son. Little did he know, and little did I know, that God had bigger plans for me. Amen? I was minding my own business when I got saved. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I was just paving my own way to hell. It's what I was doing. But God intervened. And I tell you what, friend, God's our only hope in America. We got to get back to God, and I know that I, I hit this hard this morning, but I just want to reiterate tonight and kind of encourage you because some of you may be at the point tonight, even in church on a Sunday night, is it really worth it? I've approached those guys at work at break and talked to them about their language day in and day out. Is it really work, worth it? I've approached those students about their lifestyle at school. Is it really worth it? Is it too late for them? No, it's not too late. As long as there is a God in heaven, it's not too late. God's never early. He's never late. Praise His name. He's always just right on time, isn't He? He always is. Let me talk to you tonight about it's not too late. What was the problem? First of all, they faced devastation. One insect, invasion, after another, destroyed and ruined their crops. We spent some time outdoors, as many of y'all did this weekend, enjoying our freedom, enjoying our faith, enjoying our family, and not enjoying the flies. Flies were everywhere. Did y'all have flies? I told Anna, I said, it's another insect invasion. Amen? I took the high road, the spiritual road. I said, it's another plague. It's what it is. Never seen so many flies in, 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 in all my life. But listen, chapter 1 verse 4 says, There was no food left for the people because one insect invasion after another. Look in verse 4 chapter 1. That, that which the palmer worm have left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust have left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm had left the caterpillar had eaten. So in other words, whatever the first one left, the next one to come through and it'd eat. And then whatever he would leave, the next one would come through and he would eat. And, and, and then they, they got to the point when, when they had destroyed all the crops, they, they, they faced devastation. They couldn't go on. Not only did they faced devastation, the scripture says they faced destruction. They also faced invasion from surrounding nations. They were numerous and, and they seemed to be uh, too strong for them. Then they faced desolation in chapter 1, verses 8 through 13. A severe drought. All the crops have failed. Our farmers know without rains, crops fail. Uh, that's why a farmer lives a life. Everybody lives a life of faith that knows, uh, knows Jesus, but a farmer really lives a life of faith. They live from hand to mouth, from his hand to their mouth. Because if they don't get enough rain, crops die. If they get too much rain, crops die. If it's too dry, crops die. And so they suffered and they perished because there was no water. I see Miss Wanda out there from time to time, Ricky and y'all, out there watering the lawn and watering the flowers because you ladies know it has, has to have water. They faced destruction because they didn't have that water. They were in a drought. But I want to tell you, that was, a, that was a horrendous drought of a physical nature, but they also faced a drought of a spiritual nature. There's a drought of the Word of God. They also faced discipline. Chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Uh, these things were, none of these things were accidental. Hey, Joel called it the, the day of their troubles what? The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. You see, everybody needs to be reminded that, that we're going to meet Jesus, aren't we? Everybody in here and everybody on the face of this earth has a date with deity. Brother Ken, we're going to meet Jesus, but you're only going to meet Him 
in one of two ways. You're either going to meet him as Savior or you're going to meet him as judge. That's the only way you're going to meet him. Nobody's going to dodge it, Jeff. Nobody's going to be late for it, Mitch. Nobody's going to have to be extradited from another country. When it's your time, you're going to show up and you're going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I read about the judgment that fell upon ancient Israel, I'm reminded of some of our, uh, some in our nation and in our churches today and how that every disaster seems to be more potent than the last. Have you noticed that? Every tornado. Seems to be, I can remember, and some of you, how many of you remember that our native Mississippians, Brother Lanny, my daddy, I heard my daddy talk about Camille. How many of you remembered Camille as the mother of all storms? We grew up hearing about Hurricane Camille until Katrina rolled in. And now only the elderly people in Mississippi and some that have been around know about Camille. But there was a Camille, young people, a long time before there was a Katrina. And it seems like every, every storm is worse than the, 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 the last. Every, every tsunami is worse than the last. Every tidal wave is more potent than the last. All the flooding, all the, all the high food prices and food shortages because of all these natural disasters. Am I the only one that sees that? Or do we understand that it is God trying to get our attention? Somebody said, God's not speaking anymore. Yes, sir, He is. We're just not listening too very good. God's still speaking. And God's calling out. And friend, I don't want this to be a negative message. But I just want you to understand. Because we have come and graduated to the day where we call good evil and evil good. Where we call light darkness and darkness light. Where we call right wrong and wrong right. And that's where we are in America today. And, and there's no doubt that, that, that America, it, because that, that's in our nation. What about in our churches? We have, and I'm not putting us up, but we have good Sunday night crowds. But let me tell you something. Some, some places closed on Sunday night as far as worship. We had as many people. I'm not bragging. I'm just stating the facts. Brother Ricky Dan and tell you, we had as many people sometimes on Sunday night, Brother Bud, as we did on Sunday morning at Raymond. The reason was we was the only show in town. They didn't have any intention of joining our church. They didn't have any intention of moving their letter. But they told me, said, Pastor, we don't have church. We want to go somewhere that preaches. And so they come on Sunday nights. And boy, we had a big, big time on Sunday nights, just like we did on Sunday morning. But let me tell you something. And, and I'm all for this, this praise music that honors Jesus, that is scriptural in its lyrics and scriptural in its content. But let me tell you what we live to see, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not about to get in a worship war uh, with you because I know where I stand. But we have substituted praise songs for preaching. There's nothing wrong with praise songs, but they're not to be the entirety of the service. You say, we expect you to say that. That's your job. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing cometh by the Word of God. And God chose the foolishness of preaching. Not foolish preachers and not foolish preaching, but hey, let, let's sing the songs that, that, that edify. Let's sing the songs that lift up Jesus. But we better save some room so the Word of God can be expounded. Because if we don't, We'll have everybody coming and gyrating and having a good time to all these little ditties and they're starving to death because the Word of God is not being preached. And friend, that's what we need. That's what we need that. We'd rather play than pray. We talk a whole lot about praying and we spend less time doing it than anything I know. Oh, listen, friend. We'd rather stay like we are than become more like Him. And I think that's one of, one of the reasons our young people are leaving the churches by the droves is because they look at your faces and my faces and they see how miserable we look. And they think, boy, if this is, if this is the track record for Christianity, I don't want any part of this. But I want to tell you something. Knowing Jesus is fun. Serving Jesus is fun. Going to church is fun. Living for the Lord is fun. Going to heaven is fun. Knowing the Lord is fun. It is fun. Amen. And it's a lot better. It's a lot better than the alternative. 
I hear people all the time ask them how they doing. They walk around, Brother Ricky, in your business, you probably hear it all the time. How are you doing today? Oh, it's a lot better than the alternative. <laughs> they talking about death or the grave, the coffin. I'm thinking to myself, no, it's not. If you're going to heaven, being alive is not better. <laughs> hey, man, you're out of here. Hallelujah. Hey, you're out of here. I'm out of here. If uh, I know you ain't supposed to have a fit on Sunday night, but I'm just about to, okay? Hey, you're out of here. If you know Jesus Christ, hey, I'm not saying that we ought not want to live. I'm not saying we ought not want to oh, provide for our family, but I get so excited when I think about what's, uh, what's, what's over there waiting on me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I, that where I am, there you may be also. Friend, who wouldn't want to trade that for what I have now? Casey took Logan and Caleb, Caleb Hatfield running this morning. Didn't you? Y'all went out running. Good. They come back, they's making fun of me, Brother Lane trying to get up and get going. I said, that's okay, boss. There's going to come a time when you're going to bend over to tie your shoes, you're just going to stay over there a while, amen? <laughs> and you're going to sit down on the, on the side of the bed to tie your shoes, and you're going to sound like a bowl of cereal, snap, crackle, and pop. And I said, you're going to drive past McDonald's, son, and you're going to gain 10 pounds just driving by. Then I got to thinking about trading this for that new body. Some of you, Stephanie and David, some of you are battling back pain tonight and have battled back pain. Hey, we get a brand new, glorified, resurrected body and I don't know everything I need to know about that body, but I know one thing, it's going to be just like His. And it's going to be perfect. And boy, we don't have to, we don't have to worry about uh, counting carbs. Amen. Amen. Uh, and we don't have to worry about fat grams. And we, and we don't have to worry about tests and, and, and uh, blood tests and, and all this kind of stuff. And we don't have to worry about cancer. And we don't have to worry about pain. And we don't have to worry about heartache. And we don't have to, we don't have to worry about anything. You know why? Because we're in God's perfect city. Man, who wouldn't want to trade that for where we are now? So that was the problem. They'd become so earthly minded that they wasn't any heavenly good. Here's the second thing, the plea. Oh, Joel, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, begins to talk to him in verses 12 through 14. There's a plea for repentance. He talks about well, fasting him with weeping and with mourning. We celebrate this weekend our nation's birthday and our, and our rich Christian heritage. But I wonder tomorrow if you'll go down on Court Square somewhere and you say the problem in America is sin. See what happens. And go ahead and get on a public forum somewhere and say there are not many ways to God. There's only one way to God. And don't talk about the little G. Talk about the big G. And talk, use, the, use the ugly word, Brother Lanny, Jesus. Boy, they don't care, Craig. They don't care about you talking about God. Just don't talk about the God. And they don't, they, they don't care about you talking about messiahs and saviors as long as you don't talk about the Savior. But I tell you what, friend, there's only one Savior going to save you. There's only one Messiah that's going to deliver you. And, and you see, he said we, we need to repent. And somebody said, well, Brother James, is it a special kind of sin that's keeping me from God? Yes, it is. It's your sin and it's my sin. That's the kind. And friend, once we repent of our sins and turn to God, as long as the church continues to walk in rebellion against God, the world's going to make fun of us, it's going to mock us, and we're not going to have an impact on it. The plea for repentance, but also the plea for restoration. God calls on His people to, from the oldest to the youngest to preach the Word, to, to be instant, in season, out of season, like He says in the Old Testament, to give our lives to Him, to, to don't forsake His house, to don't forsake His Word. God says, listen, God sound the alarm. You know what's happening, I think? I think God sounded the alarm in America 
We've heard it so many times, like the boy who cried wolf. God's turned on the alarm, and we've hit the snooze button. And just said, well, it'll pass. It's going to get better. Hey, listen, did you know, and I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be negative tonight, but the Bible never says it's going to get better. It says it's going to get worse, then it's going to get better. It's getting gloriously dark right now. And then the sky is going to break. And Jesus is going to come. And He's going to take His children home. And so he, there's the problem. Then there's the plea of God. And here's the last thing. There, there's, there's the promise. What, what will happen? There's the promise in verses 18 through 22 of, of restoration. He will restore those. Can God put all the pieces back together of your broken life? He can if He has all the pieces. There's a little girl one time that had been acting up, a Rick, and, and so Dad said, "I need you to go put together this jigsaw puzzle." And on the on, on, on the piece that the the picture that she was putting together was a picture of the world, a globe. And in lightning fashion, less than probably five or ten minutes, she had that gigantic puzzle put together. And he said, "Darling, how in the world did you ever manage to get those pieces together so quickly?" She said, Dad, turn the puzzle over. On the other side was not a picture of the world. It was a picture of Jesus. So she put together Jesus' face first. And the dad used it as a teaching point. Said, yes, sir. When you get Jesus in place, everything else works out in the world. And so tonight, let me tell you something. There's a lot of things out of place. It's not happening right now, but it won't take it but a moment to happen. The next great event on God's eternal calendar is the rapture of the church. There, there, there's not anything else that needs to take place. And, and boy, when the Gulf War broke out, and when we, we hear stuff about Iran, and we hear these buzzwords about one world order, and all that kind of stuff, boy, we know how quick that thing can, can switch together. But let me tell you, what's out of place real quick? The church is out of place. Right now, we are as a whole. We need to come back to God. Jesus is out of place right now. He's still on the right hand of the Father where He ever lives to make intercession for us. He's coming back, though, to redeem His bride and carry us home. And everything will line up. There, there's, there, there's the promise of restoration. Also, there's a promise of revival. He talks about latter rains. You all know what latter rains are. They fell in March or April. It was the last... Drench of heaven, latter rains. I wonder tonight if I'm preaching to some of us that maybe needs a little latter rain on your life. Your life is parched and it's dry and, and just waiting for the latter rain of heaven. And then there, the last thing is the promise of rejoicing. He says in verse 26 that God's people will experience His blessing and there will be satisfaction. So I'm asking you tonight, do you think it's too late? It's not too late. It's not too late. God tonight wants to do something in your life. God tonight wants to do something in our church. If you're here tonight and you've never been saved, there's only one way that leads to heaven. It's by the way of the cross, the way of Jesus, the blood-sprinkled way. And then if you're here tonight, Maybe you need to, maybe you prayed prayers. That was what you were praying about at the beginning of the service. You were praying about somebody that maybe you have just about given up on. God says, don't give up on them. There's still hope. Don't give up on them. There's still hope. Don't give up on Lane. Don't give up on Andy. Don't give up on your daughter. Don't give up on anybody. There's still hope. God's still working. Let's just keep on. God's still working. And then maybe tonight, you are here and you think, boy, maybe you don't normally come on Sunday night and somebody just invited you to come and you came. And you think, boy, it's too late for me. It's too late for me. It's not too late. You know why? Because our God in heaven is a miracle worker 
And I want to tell you, he majors on the hard cases. So tonight, God spoke it to your heart. Again, we have an open altar. Let's pray together. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody looking around. Brother Ricky and Miss Michelle and them's coming. And Miss Mona and we're going to have a hymn of invitation. You say, well, Brother James, Pastor, I prayed a while ago. Maybe you just need to pray again. You felt led to pray again. I tell you what, human beings, we like to give up on people, but aren't you glad? You know, when I'm tempted to give, you know, I'm not as patient as, as, so pray for my patience. I'm not always as patient as I need to be about things, but when I think about giving up on people, I remember how the Lord never gave up on me and how the Lord never give up on you. So maybe tonight you want to come back to this altar. And God's just reaffirmed, hey, it's not too late. It's not over until I say it's over. Father, I pray that you'll be lifted up during this time of invitation. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. What number, Brother Ricky? Number 168. 168. As we sing together. Remember I talked about playing and not praying. Here's your chance to pray. Hey, it's not too late. Don't give up on God. He hadn't given up on us. It's not too late. He's a God of a second chance. God of a third chance. Don't give up on Him. He hadn't given up on you. What a prayer. Boy, I need Him every hour, don't you? Need Him every minute. Every second. Every hour. What about you? tonight hasn't he maybe you just need a little reminder hey it's not too late for you to be used of God hey it's not too late for you to be used of God don't 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 buy the devil's bill of goods that you too old that you're not talented enough God to use you if you want to be used Amen. God bless you. Hey, I hope we have a good week. Hey, Rose, Rose. Hey, Rose. Oh, is there anything uh, that that you need tonight? For those of you that don't know, Rose Williams is our uh, vacation Bible school director, and it takes a special lady to be a VBS director. And, and Rose is special. We know that because of her marriage to Rick. Uh, she's a special lady, long suffering. And uh, is there anything we need or anything we can pray for? Or what, what do you need? I know sometimes, time, give her a microphone or, or just holler like you do it, Ricky. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm good right now. Miss Deborah, do you need any help over in the preschool part? That's what I was going to say. We just need all the prayers. And if you can come any day, we will find you something to do. I promise you. Uh, on, I know on Tuesday I won't be here, so Dana's going to take my place, and she's got to do that and have her class, so y'all pray for her because I know that's difficult to do. I used to do that all the time, and it's very hard. But uh, Rick's got to have a procedure done Tuesday morning, so if y'all just remember him, i got to be at the hospital at 6 o'clock, so I won't be here Tuesday. So y'all remember Dana because I know it's going to be a tough day for her to have to do all of that. Uh, just pray for us, and like I said, anybody that can come and help, 
we will find you something to do because there's going to be lots to do always. So, and remember at 9 o'clock in the morning to be praying. We're looking for a good week. Yes, it's going to be a wild week, the, but it's going to be tell, great. Tell us again the theme, Rosie, is... <clears throat> is roar. Roar. Life is wild, but God is good. Life is wild, but God, but God is, is good. good. And that's true. We've been experiencing that this week. Yes, we have. It is wild, but He is good. Yes, He is. It's going to be a good school. Amen. All right, anybody, anything else? Brother Rick? Mississippi State, yes. Oh, amen. Good, brother. That will be next Monday night, the 15th, at the Mission at uh, Broken Lives. Kind of an open worship. I've never, uh, never been there. Be a good opportunity to go. Uh, it's the same, guys. When I preach there, I preach just like I do here, but it's a different. It's a different atmosphere than it is uh, in churches, and so uh, it, it would be beneficial to you if you can go next next Monday night. All right, anybody else? That would be good. So pantry items, kind of, is that what? Oh, there's a list. Okay. Go, hey, if you want to do something, thank you, Karen. There is a list back there, and we'll take it next Monday night. We, we provided some uh, uh, that a conference Karen went to or somewhere down the road. We got some toothbrushes for last week and some toothpaste and some floss. Uh, and so, you, you know, items that we use every day, a man don't think about uh, needing, but, but, the, but they do. So, Don't kill the messenger, amen. I mean, I'm just doing my job. All right, if there's nothing else, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Matthew for Brother Matt, lead us in prayers. We dismiss, please.